A, ok, to je bilo na hrvatskom, sada, ne, sada ću preklopiti u englesko, a možemo pričati s hrvatski poslije. Ok, um, my name is Milan Gabor and as uh, I was introduced, uh, I'm the owner and the director of the small Slovenian hacking company called Virus uh, and I'm a little bit tired. Uh, why? Because I'm on the road since Friday, since we have been to BalkanCon in Novi Sad. Uh, then afterwards I flew to Dubrovnik, gave presentation there, so I was back yesterday. And today I'm here, and I'm really happy to be here, since this is my second time in Varazdin. I remember my first time, but only vaguely, because I was like eight or maybe ten years, because uh, at that time we were still in, living in the same country, so we made an excursion to Varazdin, and the only thing I can remember is drinking Vindi, you know, juice. I guess it's still here, right? It still exists. I'm still existing, so, okay. As I said, I'm an ethical hacker. I really like enjoying, enjoy the flying the drones lately. Why? Because you can sniff a lot of Wi-Fi traffic if you're flying the drones, and really from far, far away. And just for a short notice, uh, this is the location that I gave, I and my friends, we, uh, my colleagues, we gave presentations. So you can see we have been all around the world. Uh, so I will put also Warshdin on, uh, on, uh, on this map. Okay, so uh, we're going to be playing a little bit with the uh, uh, Wi-Fi packets. So if you want to see your Wi-Fi packets, don't turn off your Wi-Fi. Uh, because in Slovenia, I have a really bad reputation. So if everybody sees me, you know, the first thing he does, you know, it's like, psh, turn off Wi-Fi. Why? Because it's li really a lot of fun and you don't have to touch any people. You just touch them, their Wi-Fi packets. So if you want to see, but... Uh, even if you do it, uh, I already scan some Wi-Fi packets that your device have been sending out, so we still will have some fun, but we will do it. Otherwise, we can do it in real time. So what's the agenda for today? Um, this is it. So uh, if somebody knows how to, uh, let's say, read SQL, it's going to be like something like this. So we will be inserting something, selecting something, and creating a views. So why is visualization of the data so important? Uh, because our eyes are really good at spotting the patterns. And it's, it's our eyes and our mind, it's, so, it's made so that it's really uh, easy to, strange, to, to notice really strange patterns and get some crazy ideas. So where is the solution? Uh, and what is the problem? Today I will be showing you how to uh, use uh, the big data in really simple way on two different cases. One is the Wi-Fi packets. Why? Because if you're scanning a lot of uh, Wi-Fi, you can get a large amount of data and if you need to uh, see what's actually there, uh, the, the, this, uh, the big data uh, analyzing is really helping. And some other way, uh, in some other cases, uh, which are not let's say, um, more as ethical hacking, but maybe in incidence response, if you need to analyze, really quickly analyze and dig, dig deeper into some kind of Apache logs. So I'm going to be showing this in two, two ways, how to be really quick and really effective and really uh, getting to the problems. First, if we play uh, with a Wi-Fi packet, so this is a kind of Wi-Fi spectrum. So. Let me ask you a question. When, did, when was the last time you have seen your Wi-Fi packet? Has anybody seen his Wi-Fi packet lately? Sorry? Yeah, two minutes on the screen, okay. But who's scanning the Wi-Fi networks? Who's doing this hacking stuff? One hand, and nobody else? So you might, you might. Yeah, it's measuring. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's point of view, so you're saying. So if you're scanning, normally you see like this, right? If you use some hacking tools, you're stuck, in the, you're stuck at the uh, terminal window. And if you're using aircrack uh, programs from aircrack uh, family, you're normally stuck at this, you know. So, but with this, if you have really... Uh, let's say, busy Wi-Fi networks uh, with this, your screen even gets uh, 
too small to see that. So, but wouldn't be nice to have something like this. So you transfer from this to this. Is it better? What do you think? Which one would you prefer? This one? Who's for this one? Oh, real hackers. For this one? Nobody. <laughs> okay, I finished my talk then. Have a nice time. Have a nice day. No, really. But why the big data? Because if you're scanning the packets and if you're saving them to somewhere, you know, in real quick time, you get a lot of, lot of data. You know, so that's why it's uh, big data and it really matters. It's not the size, you know, because normally it says, well, size matters. Well, it matters in some cases, but it, it's even more important with big, big, big data how it's to use it. So I will show you how it really can be done. So in the reality, we have just this normally. There is some, some, uh, some tool, if you're trying to Google from Vivek Ramachadran, he has something, but he's using a SQL database and uh, some kind of tool, but it's not that sexy. And if you want to play with this big data, definitely, uh, since I'm not a programmer anymore, I've been developing for seven years before hacking uh, my hacking life. Uh, we want to do this without any programming, so without writing any, any line of code. So what do you think? Is that possible? Yeah, okay, so I will show you. But first, where do we start? What do we need if we, we, if we want to get some uh, nice di diagrams? First of, first of all, you of course need hardware and a software. It's a perfect combination, but since uh, we are at a um, security conference, I guess you already know that. So let's start with the hardware. You know, definitely, who owns AlphaCart, Wi-Fi? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, great. Why it's AlphaCart? Well, because it has a pretty, let's say, powerful thing, but you can also use some other, uh, other cards, uh, but you have to take care that it's the right chipset. Definitely, you need a USB cable. If you're, let's say, sniffing like I am, you especially need a long Wi-Fi cable. Uh, USB cable, and you need a power and you need a big screen. Why? Because if you want to uh, visualize all this data, if you have some kind of small screen, uh, you won't see almost everything. Then, on the other side, you need a software. So it doesn't matter if you're Linux, Windows, uh, Mac, Fan, whatever. But if you're going to some kind of exotic, uh, let's say, platforms like uh, Raspberry Pi, you might run into some kind of challenges especially with uh, one part of the software, and sometimes you need to compile a little bit by yourself, but you don't have to change any of the code. So, so we have a hardware, we have a software, and then we need to set up the environment that actually gets into, uh, that you will, uh, all these data scanned into uh, the environment and you get the data, so another two things. So let's start with the building blocks. The first one is actually Elk stack. Who has played with Elasticsearch and Kibana and some other stuff? Okay, so you know it. Uh, three parts. There are three parts of the Elk stack. I won't go into details. I won't go into uh, installing and configuring. But Elasticsearch is a search. It's actually a search index. Logstash and lately, call, lately this uh, uh, building block that's called Beats. Before it was uh, Logstash Forwarder. It's actually the parsing log. It can be uh, used for uh, different man manipulation of the logs. And at the end, it's, uh, let's say, most important thing for the visualization of this data that's actually lying somewhere there. Uh, it's Kibana. So uh, for those that haven't been playing with it, uh, these are the some, yeah, it's not mine. Uh, so you can, have such nice graph as this. So you can visualize whatever you want. You can visualize the databases, you can visualize the Apache traffic, you can visualize the syslog. Uh, it's really simple because it has Logstash and other components, has, they have quite few, um, quite few uh, numbers of plugins. So if, if you really want to uh, analyze, for example, RC, somebody is still on RC? Yeah, one, so you just plug it in and you know you can get everything that's what is going on on RC. So as I said, 
First, you have somewhere a uh, log stage server, you have a indexing engine, and you have the web interface in the end, and you have your computer. So if you want to set up an Alk stack, it's really easy. You have several good tutorials, so I won't go into the details, but once you manage to get it up and running, the next time you're going to set it up in like half an hour to one hour, you will have the uh, working and running uh, the whole stack. Of course, there is no, uh, not only the good stuff uh, with ELK uh, related, but also some kind of issues. First, there is no security. So if you're playing with uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana, and you're just setting it up uh, without, any, without anything, they're quite, everybody can connect to it. So um, you might get into, you might run into some kind of um, issues. And if you're looking, if you want to go to see what's actually out there, just go to Shodan, search Elasticsearch, and you will find several good resources of personal information. Um, when I was doing the presentation last year in, in Austria, I just went through the, uh, went through the um, Shodan, and I found some, let's say, really interesting medical data of some well-known people. Um, there are problems with alerts. Well, uh, the Alk stack is also now changing a little bit, so you have some kind of features, but for some of them you have to pay. So they're still under constant development. Now they're preparing the version 5, uh, and some of the functionalities are lacking, so uh, we're still waiting for, uh, for those to appear. Uh, maybe some um, some interesting stuff is that now they also have kind of graphs. So if you want to play with the graphs, uh, it's also very good, uh, very good possibility to do it uh, with visually. Okay, so we now have our elk set. Let's say set it up. Uh, but if we want to see, if we want to see the packets, we need to get data inside of this Elasticsearch uh, stack. So. Um, for those who doesn't know Aircrack NG, it's actually software for sniffing the Wi-Fi packets and playing and the authentication. They have plenty of, uh, this family has plenty of the tools. But when we have been playing uh, with the Aircrack, we noticed that there, is, there were some problems. First of all, um, it doesn't speak JSON. If you have Elasticsearch or some kind of other data, you know, lately the JSON is kind of standard for the for the for the data input, so it doesn't speak. We try different ways how to do it. Uh, we tried with parsing the output. We tried to parsing the uh, uh, C, uh, CSV files that Aircrack NG produces, but we failed at every time. So. Uh, now you're going to say, well, you said uh, no programming. You said how we should do it without programming. Well, with visualization data, you don't need programming. But for input, we need to change the code. So we tried to change the code for Eric and G. Uh, and we, ma we actually managed to, uh, to uh, let's say, brush up our uh, programming skills. And we changed the source code. So it actually, Eric and G also spits now the JSON out. Uh, we contributed to the main branch, but uh, I checked the latest version and they still haven't is included. Uh, but uh, at the end, I will show you the URL where you can find uh, this patch if somebody wants to play it. You just patch the Aircrack NG and it will spill, spill out the, spit out the uh, JSON, the JSON document. Well, we, uh, when we were coding, we also notified that uh, there are some kind of oh, colors, you don't see it, but the, the, the presentation is going to be posted afterwards so you can check it. Uh, we ran into some kind of other issues because there was some strange barrier in the source code. It said that it only scans like 30 probes uh, per device. So we changed that so I, I, we can now grab more than 100 probes for one device, uh, what your phones are sending out. And actually, the major part was the dump write JSON method is actually dumping the JSON to the file or to the um, some other stuff. So we ended up after coding something like this. So we have uh, MAC addresses when we have first time seen it. So it's actually this is the output of the uh, uh, error dump uh, program. But let's see how this one 
works in in uh, in a real time. So as I said, you know, first first uh, when you start, you're gonna be ending something like this. You know, this is where we have been last year in May or June. You know, you get you got to set up the Elasticsearch. You have all the data. Uh, everything is working. You see the data is coming uh, real time in it. You have all uh, uh, parameters and everything. And now what? You know, you have the data, but now what? So um, we didn't have clue that time. What can we do? You know, so we started a little bit building and visualizing, and the end result of this one, it was like something like this. So this is actually the visualization of Wi-Fi traffic around us. Uh, so we built different kind of uh, modules since it is really easy to build it. So you can get really quick look into this kind of Wi-Fi uh, packets that are running around us. You know? and, um, and we, as I said, we made some really quick uh, and effective demo. So if we want to see what's actually uh, uh, around us, so these are the Wi-Fi's with the strongest, strongest signals. We have also kind of information who is using what kind of encryption. And my, my, my uh, uh, alpha cards have seen around 441 different mobile devices around us. So, and this means that they have been just hopping around the channels and seeing what's, what's in there. Uh, so, um, if I count, I, I, I cannot count until 400 people, right, here? No? No, but I have seen 400, at least 400 uh, different devices around me. So, uh, probably this means also if somebody is walking nearby here and uh, he has a really strong... Uh, strong f uh, phone that's sending out the, the, the beacons and uh, asking who is actually on the Wi-Fi networks, I can see this. So I can see also that uh, FSEC is using Ubiquiti Network's uh, um, access points. And there are some kind of Samsung, probably this is a uh, access point made from the phone. And uh, let's see who is winning. So Samsung is winning. Apple is running the second, and then the Samsung, but if you put together, the Samsung is still a uh, leader with client vendors. So your phones, your, your uh, tablets, your PCs, and everything is still there. But this is, this, well, it's not so, let's say, not so sexy, this kind of data. But we can go through it. So you see, this is the fun part where it actually starts. Why? Because if I, let me try to, Put this little bit, little bit more, and see if this one will work. Um, uh, let me see why. Because here you see, who knows what Wi-Fi probes are? Ten minutes. Wi-Fi probes. Uh, Wi-Fi probes. Your device are sending out uh, probes from your list of wi connected Wi-Fi devices that you have been connected lately, or I don't know, maybe some, I, uh, once I had a guy who had like over 200 probes, so actually he never deleted his Wi-Fi connections. But here you see that I found that uh, some of the phones, you know, they're sending out really good, good information, you know, from this one, what can we get? You know, if you're a hacker, from this kind of information, can you see there's, can you get some interesting data out of it? Yes, what? Can you, do you know something about this person that's actually, where they've been, right? But, locations, yeah. So, uh, do you think he's traveling a lot? Or he's kind of, just staying home or traveling a lot? Traveling a lot. So, so I know that probably this person, you know, he has been also at the one security event in Slovenia. So probably because Terman Park Lashko, this was the uh, one conference in, in February. So, and he has been flying over from Vienna. You know, he has been uh, Shumbak, so Orogoro, Holetelija. So, 
we can see a lot of lot of it you know probably this one this one is hmm, it's coming probably from Croatia free wifi Chakovac, Hrvatska DM, Osterai so I know where he's shopping um, what kind of bus he's driving he's connected to the FSEC uh, from this one Zvonimir Netrokos I know where he's drinking what bar he's hanging out uh, where does he like let me see meeting groups pink uh, Puntarek, uh, let me see if this one is a little bit better, so. Um, Antunovic, Kingdom, if you if you recognize your phone, you recognize your location, go back one, that's you, okay. So, you know, I don't know you, I don't know what you, what, what's your device, well, what is your device, but I know where you have been. And if you put this, this Wi-Fi addresses, uh, there are some, uh, like Wiggle, if you put the Wi-Fi, uh, sit name, you can get actually the real addresses of the people, so real coordinates where actually this Wi-Fi is, Wi-Fi is uh, accessed. But um, let's move on. So you see, these are the the next thing is when we started, you know, to dig a little bit into deep. These are the most favorite sits. So at least 30 devices ask out for the FSEC. But uh, more sin more interesting is like, uh, who has Kuzma Duma? Any, anybody? Because you see, with this one, you can say, you can group people together. So if I know that somebody is working for, let's see if we try to Doma, Concept Niura, this one, us, Rogos. Okay, so at least six people, you know, FSEC organizers, but maybe if we find, see, I don't know where this one is, but you see who's hanging together. So you can actually group people together. So I don't know who's belonging, but I know if I click it here, I know I will get the all devices. So I know he's using the LG, he's using the Apple. Uh, actually group people uh, uh, to see who is hanging together with, him, with whom. So it's really nice to have something like this. Okay, so you, have, you can have another, uh, just what's going on. You see from this one, Yadranka. Yadranka, Yadru, Linia 3, I know that probably he has been to the island, you know, with the ferry, uh, with Yadru, Linia, somewhere free. Uh, I know how many people are connected to the FSEC, uh, but since you probably, you're most coming from, from Croatia, so you're not connecting to the FSEC, because I wouldn't connect to the FSEC either on a security conference, so you're using, so you're using uh, the, the uh, your mobile operator, so that's why it's only 19 people on the FSEC. So you can use it also as kind of intrusion detection if you know that you can have maximum of 10 people. If somebody jumps to the 20 people, you know that your Wi-Fi password has been shared somewhere. So you can see who's and who is the most active. And if it's open network, you can get there actually even the Wi-Fi IP addresses. And let's move to the to the last one since my time. Well, I still have some time, so. Um, this one, what do you think this one belongs? Because we have been speaking about the visualization of the data. Do you have any clue what's this? What is this? Port? Court. Yeah, well, it's a pie chart, yeah, but what do you think this data are up there? Yes? Well, let me, let, me, let me explain it here. So if you go here, these, this is the SSID, SSID of the FSEC. So we know the FSEC is the name of SSID. Here, in this layer, we have the MAC address of the FSEC. So in this layer, we have all connected clients to the FSEC, Wi-Fi networks. And here at the end, we have, we have the MAC address of the phone. So actually, I know it's a Sony MAC address of the phone connected to the FSEC, this Wi-Fi address. And we can do this. So Rogos is somewhere here around it. So I see also three clients that are connected. And also Cortinetti Uret, probably somewhere here around, also connected. And these are the, all the clients. So I see, OK, they have what kind of devices. They have Samsung. They have Samsung. They have Hong Hai, probably Samsung also, Apple. Uh, so I can do some nifty attacks if I know what kind of devices they're using. So it's really visualizing, and especially because Elasticsearch can offer like something like this. So if you click just, uh, if you just choose the FSEC, let's say, so uh, we will have only, 
we will have only the FSEC. So at the moment, we are only looking at the packets that are actually connected to the FSEC, what kind of the probes they have been sending out, what kind of MAC addresses, so you can do filtering without any programming, without anything, without anything else. So um, how hard is to build this kind of the data? Well, it's not that hard. If we try just to go with this one, that's actually more, let's say, more complicated. It's just this, you know, just four different data that you need to select and, as I said, without any, without any programming. Uh, the other thing, since 30 minutes is really, really short time to show it at all. The other thing is uh, you can do it same with the uh, Apache logs, you know. Uh, it's pretty simple configuration if you want to use it. And um, it can be done offline, so if you have logs. Who's grabbing? Who's still grabbing the logs? Who's using grab for grab logs? Oh, I'm not doing any grabbing more. You just, I just configured my system for the Apache logs with Elk stack. It just dropped the logs into some kind of uh, directory, and it takes the logs, analyzes, and at the end, I'm getting something like this. Uh, this year, I was catching some bad guy that was actually hacking some website, and with help of this, and with, uh, let's say, uh, they provided me like 25 gigabyte, gigabytes of uh, log files. You know, it was really, it was really easy, and you can have some some dashboards built like this in a day if you know what you are doing. So it, you can just go and dive into the into the data. You see, okay, I know that he has been um, coming from this uh, this uh, from this agent from this system, and you can filter and dig into, and you can get really good uh, really good uh, results. If you want to do it, you can do it. This also on a live system with Beats package, so you can just ship your all the logs and you can uh, you can analyze it. But if you're going with the old logs, just watch the timestamp because otherwise uh, you will get the fresh events. Uh, you have to change a little bit, so it actually takes the timestamp from the old logs. You can have all the all the history. Well, um, are there any problems? Because from until now, everything was nice and good and, you know, visual, visualized. Well, of course they are. Since the Elk stack, uh, Elasticsearch, it runs Java. So, you know, Java has been really hungry regarding the memory and other resources. Um, you can have uh, problems, but um, it's not always true because we managed to run it on a Raspberry Pi. So you can run the whole Elk stack on a Raspberry Pi. So when we are in a, um, let's say, uh, working mission, you don't want to carry your notebook uh, with you. You just carry in one pocket, you carry the battery pack. In the other pocket, you carry a Raspberry Pi. In front, you have two antennas. You might look a little bit strange. Well, um, now in the summer, well, in the winter, it's not a problem. But you can run the whole Elk stack on a Raspberry Pi without any problems. So this was the Raspberry Pi 2, but with the 3, it's, it's even better. Uh, the only problem is that the Wi-Fi on board, it, does, it doesn't support any monitoring mode, so you still have to have some kind of Wi-Fi wi devices. For those who wants to play with it, you know, on our GitHub, there is a patch for Aircrack NG. If you want to play with it, you want to mess with it with the Wi-Fi packets, um, if you want to go with the Apache logs, uh, I still haven't managed to put uh, the files and the configuration on it, but you can just stop me uh, and bug me. So just to wrap up, because my time, my time is almost up. So also for hackers, big data is a fact, you know, because sometimes if you have really amount, really big amount of data. Uh, it's really hard to visualize and get some really interesting data out of this huge, huge, huge number uh, number of packets or log files or whatever or documents can be also done. Uh, so if you're looking for something something similar to you to analyze and to use it, definitely the Elasticsearch is a it's a it's a good way. But uh, you need to be uh, really good at preparing the data. So if you have a bad data, your outcome is going to be also the bad one. And first, and the last thing, don't give up. You know, because we had a data 
uh, as I mentioned last June, uh, and we didn't know, you know, it was like, huh, what now? You know, we have all this data, what now? So you shouldn't give up. Uh, after, let's say, looking at the data and trying to visualize after one, two weeks, you will see the real potential of it. So, thank you very much. Uh, I will be still here around this day. Uh, so if you have any questions, I will be more than gladly to answer, even in Croatian language. So, uh, so just, just bug me, uh, because it's really nice thing, and it can really help not only the, 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 the hackers, but also some people from incident response, or if you have some issues uh, with the log analysis, it's a really good one. Okay, thank you very much. No questions? Just one. Only one. Sure. Sure. Uh, well, I can say if you're going to the corporate networks, then this is not so applicable anymore. But if you're going to, because some large manufacturing, you know, if they have, because these all devices and also some SCADA connected devices, they are still using web. But normally you cannot just walk into it. I know we have been doing uh, last year uh, one penetration test for one company. Uh, we actually found with the drone, so the Wi-Fi connected there was easy to break and you can actually get into the SCADA network from, from there. But in the corporate, so if you just park the car outside on a parking lot and try to get into their uh, Wi-Fi, uh, well, we didn't succeed, let's say, in last year, but we had, uh, we had success uh, with success with getting their hash passwords because they had uh, not proper uh, proper configured their enterprise uh, Wi-Fi uh, networks because they have been accepting all kind of cert. But I, uh, uh, um, But it's, well, it's not, it's, it's not always true, but in some cases, I can, I can tell you from my experience, three weeks ago, they had real good configuration, they had, but they had one guest Wi-Fi network, you know, open. They said it's only open to the, to the, for the guests, only go to the, uh, only goes through the um, internet. But uh, we noticed that they having problems with their DNS. So with the right question, we managed to pers uh, we managed to get all internals, domains, and IP addresses, and map their domain only with the usage of their DNS because it was misconfigured. So normally you cannot go there, but uh, you can get the credentials. Uh, you can if because also company employees they know they are not always using just the corporate Wi-Fi networks, but also so with the, with the guests. So you can get the hashes if you try to use like kind of responders. You can get their guests. Uh, their uh, credentials uh, or hashes. So there are still kind of attacks, but not as, not as let's say, uh, trivial as they have been, uh, let's say, five years ago. But still, it's an, it's an interesting, interesting way. So, and you sometimes you would be surprised what you can learn from these all, just scanning the Wi-Fi around their network. So, thanks. thanks.